now that we know what a function is, it relates inputs to outputs, where each input has at most one output. And we can now relate this to equations. We can re relate this to polynomials, where there's something actually happening to the numbers that we're plugging in. And we've seen this before. You know, we evaluated certain equations for x equal to 3, or evaluated something when x was equal to 7. Now we can plug these numbers into this function, perform some sort of operation, and then get our output. So this is called, now what we're going to be using is called function notation. And this is an example of an equation where before we would write it differently, but now we can write it using function notation. And the difference here, obviously, is this part right here. We have an f, and in parentheses you have uh, x. And you're told that this function, what you're told to do, is for each input, x, you add 1 to it. And you would read this just like I have down here, f of x. f of x, and then obviously the rest, equals x plus 1. And what that tells you to do is for each value of x that you plug into the this almost like a machine, you're going to add 1 to it. So let's do an example. f of 2. Our function, using the rule up here, f of x equal to x plus 1, we're going to plug 2. The Whatever's in parentheses right after the f is telling you what to plug in. So let's plug anywhere you see an x, we'll plug 2 in. And we'll get 2 plus 1. So our function evaluated at 2 is equal to 3. And that's it. Our function evaluated at 2, f of 2, is equal to 3. Now let's go to the next page. I'm going to explain why this method might be better to use than some of our previous notations. Here is an example of comparing function notation, what we're going to see now, compared to what we've seen before. And before what we did, when we wanted to evaluate an equation, we wanted to we had certain inputs that we were plugging in and we were getting different outputs. We had a relationship between our x's and our y's, our inputs and our outputs. We would just plug numbers in for x and we get our y. So let's do that. Let's just do an example where we plug in, let's say, x equal to 2. What happens when you plug x equal to 2? Well, when x is equal to 2, we would just plug it in, and we would get our output. We get 4 plus 7. We get our output of 11. So we see that our input was 2, our output was 11. Pretty simple. That's what we've seen before. <clears throat> Using function notation, you know, if you just see here at the very end y is equal to 11, you don't necessarily, you, you can't, unless you look back to the what you actually plugged in, you can't see at this last step what your input was. We just know the output. The good thing about function notation is that instead of just continually writing y, 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 our output, 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 we're going to be writing our input as well. So over here we have g of x, which is before we saw f, but a function could be a g of x, it could be an h of x, it just means something is happening to our inputs. We're performing some sort of um, operations here on our input. So let's do the same thing. Now before, where you would write x equal to 2, now you're, you're just going to be able to see g of 2. It's going to say find g of 2. And that means 2, instead of writing x equal to 2, it just means plug 2 into your function and see what you get. So when we plug 2 into g of x, we're going to get the same answer. We already know that. But notice that when we do this, every time instead of writing y equal to this, y equal to that, I'm writing g of 2, g of 2. So then at our last step, g of 2 equal to 11, we get the same answer, our output equal to 11. Our output, g evaluated at 2, equals 11. But in this last step, we can not only see what our output is, but also what our input was. It tells you when you plug 2 into this function, you got 11. And this is what 
uh, why function notation is helpful and something that if you just take the extra step to continually write g of 2, g of 2, g of 2, then we'll have our input and our output together in one line. Finally, function notation just like if you were told before that y is equal to a certain amount and you go back and solve for your input, your input of x, we can see the same thing with function notation. So now if you're given a function, you're told that you know, when you plug x into this particular rule, you multiply it by 3 and you add 2. We're told to find x, find our input value that gives us an output of 17. So we're looking for the value of x that makes this rule, this function, equal to 17. So what we can do is just take our function, f of x, which is 3x plus 2. That is what we're doing, and we want to know when that particular rule is equal to 17. We know our output, so now let's solve for our input. So that notation will be slightly different. We're not plugging 17 in. Notice 17 is not inside the parentheses it's on the outside. We're told that this is what the function equals. So now just using our properties of equality, we can solve for x. So our input of 5 will give us 17. And we can just go back and say, well, f of 5 is equal to 17. And that would be our answer.